Thank you. Um, since the last time we spoke after the game the other night, I, uh, Victor Vasquez was in, uh, Samuel's in as well. Have you been able to get them going in the training? And what are your thoughts on how they look? Uh, so they, they have been doing quarantine training. Uh, they will be, Victor will be joining into the team tomorrow, uh, officially. And Samuel has a couple more days cause he was, a he was a couple days later. So he'll be within the group as we start preparation for the match on the weekend, and then he'll be available to play on Saturday. Um, so the guys are, that are, have come back from international duty and those two in particular are now all starting to integrate into the full team environment here over the next uh, couple of days. So Victor will be available tomorrow or no? He, he will be available okay. tomorrow. He has uh, done a lot of work on the side and, and he's ready to get going. So um, we will use him tomorrow and get him some minutes. We, I don't know quite how long it will be, we'll push him, but we'll get him some minutes and start to integrate him into the group. Um, looking back at the game on, uh, what was that, Saturday, what did you like the first half? You guys seemed to create some chances, but you know, the final um, yeah. pass was maybe lacking there. What did you compare the first half to second half? And what did you like out of the, the, the two groups you had out there? Yeah, I, I thought the, um, you know, the one thing that was missing in the first half was just finishing off. It was the final action, whether sometimes it was the pass that didn't connect to the, the finisher or a couple of them we did and we, we didn't put it in the back of the net. You know, Javier had a, had a good, really good chance. Sasha had two good looks. Um, you know, the difference in, in games and winning and losing is, is executing when you have those moments. And that's kind of what I said to the guys at halftime. It's wonderful that we can come in and say we played well and we controlled the game for by, by and large, but to get results, we have to execute in, in the key areas on the field and the key moments of the game. And that's the, the one thing that lacked a bit in that first half. Um, there's still details that we're working through and we can tighten up again. Um, and we did some of that this morning. And so, the second half, I thought, um, you know, they adjusted a little bit on how they were pressing us and we had to adjust a little bit in terms of how we were setting up to build our attacks. We still had a couple of really good moments. Augie uh, had essentially a, a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper that we didn't finish um, and maybe one or two other looks that were a pass away from being really good opportunities. The goal we gave up on the day was, you know, we lose a challenge at the top of our box that we can't, that we can't afford to really lose. And then the kid uh, was a nice young player. He curls one into the back post and it's a good goal, but it's not a, it's a challenge we can't lose at the top of the box so that he can face our goal and, and get a shot off. So again, it comes, it comes down to execution. So, but I, I think overall our group is starting to develop an identity on how we're trying to play. It's, we're starting to understand uh, the scenarios that exist and if we see certain things, how we can adapt and, and create problems for the opposition. And now we need to, we need to be better in the final action. We need to recognize the right moments when the tempo needs to go from being a possession type of tempo to now being more of an attack and the speed needs to pick up and, and things need to be faster. Um, things like that are all kind of the, that next, that next step for this group. Um, but we're, we're, we're there and now adding more guys and some of our, Guys that we've been trying to add to the team, back into the team, a lot of those things will start to, uh, I think will start to come into play, but we've got to get all those guys integrated with each other as well and over the next 10 days. So that's the work in progress. Thanks, Greg. Yep. Thank you, Damien. We'll go with Josh Gesman from Corner of the Galaxy next. Josh, go ahead. Hey, Greg. Um, you know, you sort of talked about having, you know, 10 days sort of left now. Um, what is the team going to sort of look like on Wednesday versus Saturday? How much are you sort of putting stock into quote unquote starting lineups before you, you end your preseason and really have to get ready for Miami? And do you think you're going to have enough time to get the guys that you sort of expect in your mind that is our starting lineup to, to be ready for that Miami game? Well, we will, I mean, tomorrow as a game, we'll try to use it almost like a, a training session, but against, you know, live opposition, which is nice. We'll split the game in half, two 45s. We'll kind of have two different teams that will play each of those 45s as much as possible. That'll put us in a place physically to continue to train a little bit on Thursday and try to continue to integrate the group. Friday we'll, or Saturday, we'll approach that game a little bit more like it's a, a live game and we'll try to spread the, the minutes out, uh, push guys a little bit more towards the 90 minutes that we expect them to play. Um, so we're going to try to use this game to integrate as many of the guys who are kind of coming back into the team or are new to the team to get them on the field together to utilize these next 10 days to, 
to progress them as much as we can. We'll assess that between now and the in the first game to see how ready they are for for opening match and and uh, and what we should set for a lineup. But we're going to do our best to just get as many guys integrated into again the identity of what we're doing and understanding. Uh, our principles and all that kind of stuff here over the next 10 days. We're going to get as far as we can. Uh, these are most of these guys are quite experienced and have had have experience within the concepts that we're doing. It, it shouldn't take too terribly long. Um, but we we're going to do the best we can here over the next, like I said, 10 days to get that done. How, how does the team look injury wise in terms of, I know you had some guys out like Derek Williams, um, people Gonzalez also, I don't know if they're back to training, but are they getting close to training? Um, do you have any additional injuries that you're worried about as you progress through these through these next ten days? Uh, right now, everybody is um, is on the mend and getting back into the group. So Derek trained with the group full today. He was he's been kind of modified, but in the larger session over the last few days. Uh, O'Neill Fisher trained full today. Trained full yesterday. He's integrating in. We'll probably manage those guys a little bit tomorrow, but try to push them towards match play by the weekend. Um, Pipo is on still return to play. He's not ready to integrate back into the group yet. Um, and Danilo is uh, one who is also starting to integrate back into to game minutes and playing. He just had a very minor setback. Uh, other than that, everybody else is is good and they're in training and we expect to move forward with them, you know, through tomorrow and, and the games coming up. Thanks, Greg. Yep. We'll go for with Rodrigo Serrano from Dario As. Rodrigo, go ahead. Hey, Greg, how are you? Hello, Rodrigo. So have you seen uh, Javier Hernandez during these preseason games? And also, how is the style of play you're trying to implement? Is helping him or what needs to be improved to make him that good striker that he was in Europe? Yeah, I think, you know, for me, first and foremost, his work rate has been great every single day in training. His fitness level is there. Uh, he's been working hard on both on the attacking side, defending side. He's made some clever runs and has helped us uh, build some actions. And he got on the end of uh, one of our actions this weekend and unfortunately kind of got a little bit behind him and he lifted it up and it hit the crossbar. Um, so I, I think a lot of things are there. I think, again, as, um, as our group starts to come together and Jonathan and Victor and Seba and the Mick the, and Granzier and the mix of those players also start to settle into our style, then uh, I think that there's going to be a, a real support system around him to get him the chances that he, that he needs and that he will get because he, he's a very clever runner. I've said this over and over and he's put himself in the good spots, even through the preseason Sometimes we don't have that. We don't give them the final pass that we need. We miss the final pass. It goes over the crossbar. It goes too far. It goes, it's too, it's too soft or it's not in the right spot. Things like that have to tie together. It's a little bit of, of when I say our final product has to, has to really get to where it needs to be to execute. Um, part of that is helping him. And part of that is uh, him also just getting sharper as well. So I feel like that's coming together. I, I've, seen it in training and, and I'm seeing moments of it in the games. And I think it's going to be uh, more consistent as, again, as more of the players uh, arrive and get connected with each other within it. But I, I feel like he's, he's in a really good spot right now. We'll go with John Rojas from Juan Franquicia. Go ahead, John. Thanks, Ricky. Greg, uh, thanks for the time. Two quick ones. You, uh, the first one, you were talking about the injured guys. Um, there is this rumor in Costa Rica that people needed to go through surgery. Is that uh, accurate? Uh, that is not accurate. We don't have anything for him that he, where he needs to go to surgery. He's, uh, he had a couple, um, what you would call them injections, which is normal for players these days. And uh, they are uh, drawing a blank on them, but they, they essentially are, it's like fuel, like oil in the, in the joints a little bit. It's, it's very common these days. And so he was, uh, he had a couple of those, a couple series of those. He's now running. He's he's working. We don't have any ind indication at, at any point that he has to. He needs a surgery. Uh, we'll continue to progress him and continue to push through this process, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see that he if he can get to where we need him to be to play. But that's our expectation, and he's feeling better with every day that he's doing things. But we'll we'll keep that posted on that. But there's no indication of surgery anytime soon. Thank you. And the second one is the. Um... Is, is that true that the Galaxy officially uh, told Boca Juniors that is walking away from the idea of bringing uh, Christian? Come on. Um, 
I don't know if what conversations have been had with, with Boca juniors, uh, for us, again, the, the Christian Pavone situation is, is not under our control specifically. So, uh, we need to continue to move forward as a club that doesn't take Christian out of our, uh, prospects of people we can add at some point, whether that's, whether that's shorter term or longer term, we'll see where that goes, but we have to keep moving forward and we have to prepare this team for this season. And, We'll see how things uh, continue to progress. I don't know what communication has had be has been had between the Galaxy and Boca. Though. Thanks. Thanks, John. We'll go with Larry and Morgan next from Corner of the Galaxy. Larry, go ahead. Hi, Greg. Thanks for talking to us. Yep. Um, I realize, or we realize, that you're still missing several key 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 players, uh, both absences and injured. Um, how would you assess the overall progress of this team? So far, is it about where you expected it to be? Perhaps a little bit behind. How, how would you assess the progress? I am, uh, in all honesty, I'm I'm happy with where we are. I think again, our capacity through some of these games against opponents who have been playing some of their top lineups or the majority of their time top lineups, we've we have had great moments of just controlling the game, being difficult for them to to manage us. We've created some opportunities through that. We haven't executed in the final plays uh, enough to to turn what are good, decent, so good, solid performances. I wouldn't say nobody's playing great yet. It's the beginning. It's preseason. So, um, but if we've had good, solid moments and um, what I see is the players are understanding our shift from whatever was happening before to what our version of what we, how we want to play are, the players are making that transition. We've got a lot of minutes over this preseason for some of our younger players, the young teenagers who are coming through, and they're showing real, real ability to understand and, and to be successful within what we're doing as well. So it bodes well for, for the depth of our team that we have these players who are right there ready to compete and are ready to play. And I think the understanding of what we're doing is coming along and coming along quicker than probably I had expected. Um, having said that, getting players in and, and into our group has taken longer than I expected just because of between quarantine and visas being slow and all that. I felt like we would have a, a fuller roster today than we, than we do maybe or a week ago than we did. Uh, but I'm happy with where we are. I think guys are feel very comfortable and, and understanding uh, between video work and what we've done in the fields. Guys are uh, guys are clear as to, as to how we want to play and what are the things we're trying to accomplish. And for that, I feel like we're in a good spot. You know, now we've got to integrate some very important players into our team. Uh, and that is, you know, how quickly that process can, can take place for them to, to be on the same page and understand that stuff is really our, our challenge for the next 10 days to get the season started. Thank you. Yep. We have time for one more. We'll go with Giovanni Garcia. Joe, go ahead. Hey, Greg. Um, <clears throat> I want to ask you about Jonathan Bond. Uh, he, he's a very vocal leader. That's something I don't think we've seen within the last couple of seasons uh, with the LA Galaxy. Um, what are some things that, that you like about Jonathan Bond and what are some things you, you would like for him to improve on? I like a lot of things about him. I think through this preseason as I've gotten to know him, he is a uh, hardworking, eager learner. Uh, you know, at the beginning of preseason, we asked Jonathan, a lot of play, a lot of goalkeepers who come from the EPL uh, are, are kind of line goalkeepers. They, they tend to stay in their six yard box and, and they make saves. And especially with the teams that he was, he was with, they tend to sit a little bit deeper defensively and he tends to play more in his box and box and deep in his box. The, the teams he played with before didn't necessarily try to build out of the back quite as much. And so what I've asked him to do is to, to use this preseason to really come off of his line, to be really connected to the back line, to, to get into the top part of his box and sometimes out of his box to help us in the distribution and, and to do things that, um, that we've seen he's very comfortable with. And when we spoke with him before he came, he said he was comfortable with. They just weren't things that his team was asking him to do uh, over in the EPL. And I, and I think he has really taken to that. You know, I think you, you've seen him distribute the ball both with his feet and with his, with his throwing very well. Uh, he's managed some situations where opposition has tried to press us. He's found really good passes and under calm conditions and just found our outs, uh, which is very helpful. He's made some very big saves, both um, in kind of those one-on-one -on -one or difficult situations, as well as shots from distance. He's come out and managed some crosses well. Um, so he, he's doing a lot of things. I mean, there's nothing really that, that I would say 
I really want him to change. I just want him to keep settling in within our team and can continue to communicate and continue to understand what it is that we're asking for him as a goalkeeper through our different phases of play uh, and keep progressing. But he's a hard worker. He's an honest guy and he wants to continue to improve. And, um, you know, once games really start and we really get going, we'll have a full assessment of all the teams. These are just, these are preseason games and it's, it's a hundred degrees outside and the tempo is not that fast. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we're missing right now is just a high, high energy, high tempo game because it's just, it's too warm right now for, for the, these games being played in the afternoon for the intensity level to be really high for the long stretch of the game. And that's, but that's how it's going to be in Miami on the first game. And, and so that's what we've got to deal with. We've got to manage that. If I can just follow up real quick. Um, Joe Naraho is the name that, you know, it's probably going to be mentioned throughout the season. He's been, you know, rumored with a lot of different, you know, European clubs. What kind of conversations have you had with Joe Naraho? Obviously, we know the U23 is not going to go to the Olympics, but what kind of conversations have you had with Joe Naraho to help him potentially get to the next level? Yeah, there, there's a lot of things that uh, for Julian is, that I that I have said to him, you know, uh, is there's things that I want him to learn and that I want to teach him about the position. You know, he's a, he's a young man with a, a ton of physical capacity to get up and down the sideline for 90 minutes and to be in the attack and then to recover and defend. But I want to teach him to be a little, have a little more nuance in his game that it's to figure out when should he slide into a more interior position? When should he open up wide? When should he drop out a little bit? When should he go high? Uh, but not just to always do the same thing, which is to sprint up and down the line because the position has more variation in it than just that. And so I want him to, to learn when he's not involved in the attack and we're behind the play, what, is, what should his positioning be in preparation for transition? All these kinds of things uh, and an awareness of defensive reading and defensive, defensive scenarios. And so for us, we want to continue to round out his, his skill set and his ability to understand the moment in the game and to give the game what it needs inside of all of the qualities that he has as, as, as a right back. And so there's a lot, he's a young player with huge upside and huge potential, but there's a lot of things still for him to learn. And those are the things that we, he, he needs to focus on and we need to focus on and not be ahead of ourselves with wherever he's gonna go next and what opportunities he has. Right now, it's just focusing every single day on improving as a player and fitting into what we're trying to do as a team and building his skill set. So no matter what his next opportunity is, he's going to be prepared and ready to be successful. Um, but in the meantime, let's try to win some games here. Let's continue to get better and let's play for a championship uh, over the course of this season. So that for me is for Julian and, and he's aware of that. Uh, we've had that discussion and, and he's good to go. Thank you. Greg, thank you so much for your time today. All right. Thank you, everybody. Everybody will now have LA Galaxy midfielder Victor Vasquez joining us um, for Victor. We'll do session of questions in English followed by questions in Spanish. So if you do have a question for Victor, please use the hand raise function on the Zoom uh, feature. Again, we'll start with questions in English followed by questions in Spanish for Victor. Hi, Victor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you. We'll start with questions in English. We'll go with the first question to Kevin Baxter from the LA Times. Kevin, go ahead. Hey, Victor. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Nice welcome. to be back. Yes, welcome back to MLS. I have, yeah. a, I have a kind of involved question. Um, it's got a few parts to it. Um, looking at your what you've been doing in the last year, year and a half, or since you left MLS, yeah. it, 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 there's, there's not a lot of games that show up. So I'm wondering, what have you been doing for the last year or so um, to stay fit? Yeah, well, the last year it's gonna, it's been difficult for everyone. But of course, for me, it's been a bit more difficult because uh, January 2020, I was uh, uh, leaving the team. I, I was playing in Qatar. Then I start to train with another team in uh, in Qatar that I was I was fit. I was just training, but not playing games, but I was fit. Then in June, my contract was uh, was finished in Qatar. Then I moved to Barcelona for for just a couple of months for holidays. Then I moved back to, to Belgium to open in August. 
And then I was there for two months and a half. I didn't play so much. I was training with them, uh, but also because of COVID and all the rules in Belgium, it was difficult to play. I play only one game and three friendly games, I guess. But yeah, I was training. I was training hard. I had my personal coach in Barcelona since I left uh, Open in October and of October. And I'm fit. I'm fit. I just need to get the, the rhythm of the game. But for the rest, I'm, I'm the same player as I was two years ago in, in TFC. And did you come back? I mean, was it the chance to come back and play for Greg uh, Van? Is that why you came back to MLS? And has he told you how he intends to use you? Yeah, for me, it was, it was pretty simple now because I'm 34 and I'm looking for a big project. I'm not looking for just to keep playing football and whatever you take, it's going to be fine. No, I was looking for something big, for something that it really matters for me. And of course, when Greg told me that he was moving from TFC to LA, I was saying to him, if, uh, if uh, we can... We can do that. It will be amazing for you. It will be amazing for me because I want to be back in a in a strong competition, in a good league like MLS is. And happy, really glad uh, that uh, that I'm here. I will be always really thankful to Greg and all his staff, and of course also to Dennis and and Jovan because they they give me another opportunity. And it's not easy because, like you said, the last year and a half I didn't play so much. But like I said also, I'm the same player. I have to get uh, games and everything will be the same. And how does he intend to use you? Has he told you? And again, thank you for your time. Sorry? Um, how does Greg intend to use you? Has he said what, what, how you'll be playing? And, and, uh... No, we, we, we couldn't spoke, uh, speak too much because I'm here since uh, last Thursday. Uh, it's only five, six days. Uh, we spoke a lot by uh, by WhatsApp, by by, uh, by the phone, but uh, Greg's know me and I know Greg. Uh, whatever he needs, I will be ready. If I have to start, I will start the most of the games. If I have to start from the bench, it will be good as well. I'm here just to help the team, to help LA to be back again where where we have to be because the last couple of years, the club didn't do, didn't good didn't do sorry so well. And now we have a really good group, and I know that uh, with the technical stuff we have, we're going to do great for sure. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Galaxy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. We'll go to Damian Calhoun from LA Daily News next. Damian, go ahead. Hey, Victor. How you doing? Hey, man. Thank you. I'm good. <laughs> good. Uh, so Greg said he's going to integrate you in the lineup tomorrow. How many minutes do you think you can go and... How do you think you'll feel by next Sunday when the season goes starts? Yeah, it's going to be great for me to have a bit of minutes because since October, like I say, since October 15 or something like that, I didn't play a game. Uh, I know it's going to be very hot because here in Tucson is, is very hot and the time we play is going to be tough for sure for all the players, but even more for me. But hopefully I can get 45 minutes, uh, first half or second half, whatever Greg uh, say will be good for me. I'm ready for it. I'm really excited to play and to know my new teammates because I couldn't train with them uh, nothing at all yet because I'm doing uh, all the individual trainings with, uh, with the physical coaches. But I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here, ready to, to, to play again. And of course, for, next, uh, for the first game of the season in Miami, we'll see where, where am I. But uh, I will be ready, what, uh, Greg, uh, whatever need uh, Greg. And one more, when you look back to the year you guys had in Toronto, um, was there a moment that sort of, when did everything sort of like click for you guys on the field with Greg, with you running the show on offense? When did everything just sort of click for you guys um, during the season? Yeah, since I arrived in Toronto, I, I saw the team, I saw the group we have, the technical staff all around the club. It was great. It was awesome. Then I think from the beginning, from the beginning, I, I started to play in Vancouver. I remember that I scored my first goal there when I came from the bench. I think we, they had already an amazing group. I just add something, something different, more maybe the quality I have, the vision I have, also the leadership I can have in and out of the, the field. And they had the amazing team, okay? They, they play against Seattle, the, the final of the MLS final that they lost on penalties. And I think they had everything. I just had something, like I said. And then the click, it was immediately, because for me, it was so, so easy to, to adapt to, to Greg's system or to the, to the team. And one more before I go. Um, do you see yourself as a coach at some point? If, sorry? 
at some point when when your playing days are over, do you think you're you transitioned into being a coach? Yeah, I'm I'm already studying for, for a coach. I have already the the second level, the level B, and I only need now the the last one, the pro one. And yeah, it's one of my ambitions. I would I would love to to be a coach. I don't know what the future will bring, but if if whatever brings, I will prepare to be a coach. I like it. All right. Thank you. So with Josh Gessman with Corner of the Galaxy next. Josh, go ahead. Hey Victor, thanks for talking to us. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, whenever we talked to to Greg about you coming in, he was uh, emphatic in his trust and his admiration for the way that you play. Um, does that go both ways? Do you do you understand and, and and sort of what Greg is thinking? And do you guys think the same? Like, what are your thoughts on on Greg? I guess I should ask. Yeah, I I always say for me, Greg, it's it's an amazing coach. It's like a he's not like only a coach. For me, it's more like a a good friend. You know, we we made an amazing relationship in Toronto the the two years that I was playing there. Uh, we had many talks together about the team, about the players, about everything, because I like to be involved about uh, everything, you know. I'm not a player just coming here and just playing and forget about the other things. I like to be involved. Greg know, uh, all the staff also knows. And like I said, I'm an experienced player, 34 years old, that I can bring also this kind of experience that I play in many countries, many good teams also. And I have also the respect from the, from the, from the teams here, from the players, because the season we did in Toronto it was so, so good that winning this travel for the first time in the history. Then I just want to play football, just have fun again, and I will, because with Greg and the team we have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a lot of fun for sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. We'll go with Scott French next with MLS Soccer. Scott, go ahead. Hi, Victor. Um, you've played for a, a number of managers. How would you describe how Greg sees the game? How do his philosophies uh, play out on the field tactically? Um, are there things he does or, or emphasizes that are different from what other managers do or emphasize? In, in what ways would you say he is unique? I say also many times when I was in, at TFC, um, he's like the style of uh, Guardiola and Luis Enrique. It's a Barcelona style because he loves to have the ball all the time. He loves to press after losing ball as fast as possible to get the ball again back and play with the ball again. Uh, we, he's an offensive guy. He loves to play uh, soccer too. He knows that the best way to attack and to manage the game is to have the ball. Then that's why we had a lot of success in Toronto and they still have the same success because they are keeping the same style as Greg uh, did when he was there. And for the rest, it's pretty simple because when you have the ball, you have to enjoy. When you have the ball, you have more fun. Uh, you don't have to run behind the ball. You don't have to put yourself in a bad situation. I think we're going to do that. We have the players. Uh, the technical staff is the same as in Toronto. All of them, they know Greg and they know us uh, so good. Then I think, like I said before, we have a lot, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, for sure, the results has to come because if you don't have results and you are having fa fun, then it's is nothing because football it works like that, but with the team that uh, they are building, I think uh, it's going to be a great year for for Galaxy for sure. Thank you, Victor. Yeah. We'll go with Larry Morgan next with Corner of the Galaxy. Larry, go ahead. Hi, Victor. Thanks for speaking with us. Hi, Larry. Um, one last question about you and Greg. How much how much older does he look since the last time you saw him? Has he aged well? <laughs> <laughs> he's looking the same. <laughs> he has a bit more like beer because in Toronto he wasn't he wasn't with the beer. He has a different style, but he doesn't look older than he was. He's the same. I think he has the same ideas. He's the same guy, and he for sure he's really excited also to to bring a galaxy back where where we have to be. I think he he loved this club too because he's from here. He played for, for this club. He was really successful with uh, Galaxy in the past. And all, all, I think all the group, all the players, all the, the, the people around the club, we are so excited because the things we are building, I think it's uh, on the right way. And we are so glad to be here. Thank you very much. Ahora cambiaremos a las preguntas en español. Empezamos con Katia Castorena de ESPN Deportes. Katia, adelante. 
Gracias, Vicky. Víctor, qué gusto saludarte. Igualmente, Bien. Katia. Bienvenida a Los Ángeles. Eh, un, una, bueno, dos preguntas. La primera, ya lo explicabas en inglés, pero lo que significa integrarte a este equipo y dónde lo ves en cuanto a las posibilidades que tienen con, con el grupo que, que se ha ido formando, de, con, comparando quizá un poquito lo que decías de, de lo que viste en, en Toronto, cómo ves también las posibilidades aquí en el Galaxy. Y la segunda pregunta, decías, ¿a, a Greg le, le gusta ese estilo ofensivo? El Galaxy la temporada pasada careció... Bueno, en ambos lados, tanto en defensa como en ofensiva, pero él ha hablado mucho de lo que le ilusiona el poderte ver a ti con Chicharito, el, el utilizar tu visión y tu calidad para ver esos movimientos que él suele hacer y que puedan conectarse de esa manera y encontrar los goles. Bueno, pues la primera pregunta, eh, lo importante es que venimos a, a llevar a los Galaxy a donde tenían que estar, donde los últimos años no han podido estar. Eh, venimos todo el mundo muy motivado y con muchas ganas de de sacar buenos resultados y de hacer buena temporada y sobre todo lo más importante que es en la MLS que el equipo vuelva a jugar unos playoffs una vez conseguido ese primer eh, paso luego todo ya es más fácil todo es a base de buenos resultados de jugar buenas eliminatorias pero sí yo creo que es muy importante y que la gente está muy metida de que el equipo tiene que volver a, a jugar los playoffs y la segunda pregunta pues muy fácil eh, Greg ya me conoce yo conozco a Greg él ya sabe lo que puede esperar de mí, eh, yo ya sé también lo que me, él me va a pedir dentro del campo y con Chicha va a ser muy fácil, va a ser muy fácil jugar con él porque ya sé cómo juega, lo tengo visto mucho de, del Sevilla, del Madrid, de cuando estuvo en el Manchester United que también nos enfrentamos y bueno, es un jugador muy fácil de entender, eh, como me pude entender con Sebastián, con Jovinko y con Altidor en, en Toronto, yo creo que va a ser más de lo mismo con Chicha, jugador inteligente que le gusta sobre todo moverse detrás de los defensores y marcar goles, que es lo importante, como siempre dije, mi labor es que ellos marquen goles. Entonces, yo voy a dar las asistencias y jugar como sé para que ellos puedan, puedan tener eh, esos, esas oportunidades de meter goles y ser los importantes del equipo, porque al final el delantero es el que marca los goles. Vamos ahora con Daniel Schwartzman de TUDN. Daniel, adelante. Gracias, Vicky. Hola, Víctor. Eh, nos da mucho gusto verte por acá en Los Ángeles. Eh, nuestro último recuerdo había sido con Cruz Azul, me refiero en México. ¿Nos puedes sí. comentar un poco los recuerdos que tienes de tu paso con, con la máquina y el cariño que le tienes a, a México? Bueno, pues la verdad que, que, le, que le tengo un cierto cariño a Cruz Azul también porque me dio una grandísima oportunidad de, de jugar en el fútbol mexicano. Está claro que la temporada que estuve allí no se me dio como a mí me hubiera gustado y como al club y como a todo el mundo le hubiera gustado. Era una situación un poco difícil, tanto a nivel de club como a nivel de equipo, donde no estuvimos a la altura de lo que esperaban de nosotros. Y bueno, pues fue una experiencia muy bonita por el tema de vivir en México, de estar en México. Pero a nivel profesional, pues tengo que ser sincero y no fue lo que yo esperaba ni lo que esperaba el club. Entonces, siempre me quedó, siempre lo dije, la gente lo entendió un poco mal pero me quedo con ese sabor amargo de tanto como yo no pude demostrar el jugador que soy y también el club a lo mejor no me acabó tampoco ayudando en lo que a lo mejor me podía haber ayudado porque también era una experiencia nueva para mí, aclimatarte a un nuevo juego, aclimatarte a la altura de México que no es fácil, todo. O sea, fue un año complicado, pero bueno, una experiencia más que tuve en mi carrera y siempre estaré agradecido a Cruz Azul porque a lo mejor si no hubiera pasado por Cruz Azul no estaría hoy donde estoy. Gracias y éxito. Gracias. Vamos con Diana Alvarado de Univision Los Ángeles. Diana, adelante. Gracias, Vicky. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Bienvenido a la ciudad de Los Ángeles. Eh, en ese acoplamiento, eh, cuéntanos, ¿cómo te sientes en la ciudad de Los Ángeles? ¿Cómo esperas que va a llegar la afición que está ávida de resultados al estadio ahora que van a tener la oportunidad de estar presentes? Pues bueno, me pasa un poco como en Cruz Azul, yo creo, ahora. Llego a un club donde las últimas temporadas pues no se está cumpliendo con los resultados. En Cruz Azul me pasó lo mismo. Yo siempre dije que me gusta jugar con esa presión, porque cuando un jugador siente esa presión, yo creo que es más, te sientes como más motivado, como que también la afición está detrás tuyo, aunque a veces también entendemos que la afición pues, tiene sus enfados y su forma de actuar porque no estamos cumpliendo con nuestro trabajo o no estamos sacando los resultados que deberíamos sacar. Pero vengo muy motivado, con muchas ganas de hacerlo bien, de hacerlo como yo sé, de ayudar al equipo en todo. Y nada, y de conseguir lo que dije, como dije bien antes, de clasificarnos para el playoff, que es lo más importante, y luego todo lo que tenga que venir va a ser bueno, pero devolver a los Galaxy a donde tienen que estar, porque para eso es el, el equipo y el club más grande de la MLS que tiene más títulos. Entonces, como dije, es un poquito como Cruz Azul, estoy ahí 
no tengo, ese, no tengo miedo porque a mí jugar a fútbol nunca me dio miedo, pero sí tienes ese respeto de que tienes que hacer las cosas bien porque tienes que llevar a un, un gran club donde tiene que estar. Y con esas ambiciones que tienes para ser entrenador, con ese conocimiento que tienen y esa interacción que ya tuviste con Greg, eh, ¿qué vamos a ver de Víctor adentro del terreno de juego como líder, eh, como de alguna forma entrenador ya para volver a, a volver a unificar bien ese ataque del equipo? Pues sí, como tú has dicho, eh, mi labor va a ser esa. Ya soy un jugador con mucha experiencia. Eh, también tenemos otros con mucha experiencia, como Chicharito, como eh, Daniel, como Derrick, que ahora ha llegado también. Son jugadores muy experimentados, pero bueno, mi función yo tengo claro que va a ser eh, hacer mi juego, llevar las bolas a los delanteros lo más rápido posible para que ellos puedan... Eh, eh, puedan tener esas ocasiones y marcar goles y crear buen juego eh, ofensivo y nada, y luego comunicarme bien con todo el mundo, saber eh, dónde tenemos que estar colocados, dónde tenemos que hacer bien las cosas porque también es un cambio de sistema para ellos eh, con Greg es todo nuevo eh, entonces yo ya sé cómo trabaja Greg yo les voy a poder ayudar mucho dentro del campo y fuera también, y nada como te dije, estoy muy muy motivado, tengo muchas ganas otra vez de volver a, a sentirme eh, bien dentro del campo y sobre todo profesional porque el último año pues bueno las pasé fueron duros fue, fue duro para mí bienvenido gracias gracias vamos con John Rojas de jugador franquicia John adelante gracias Vicky hola Víctor gracias por el tiempo hola, Víctor dos, pregun dos preguntas algunos jugadores que, que manejan los tiempos de juego como como es su caso dicen que se necesitan unos 10 partidos para poder encontrar fluidez y engranar un sistema habiendo jugado eh, ya para Greg eso ¿Puede variar? ¿Puede ser más rápido? ¿O de todas formas habrá que esperar para verlo? No, no creo que tengamos que esperar tanto. Eh, yo creo que vienen trabajando muy bien ellos este último mes, a pesar de, también de las circunstancias con lo del tema COVID y todo. Pero yo creo que Greg tiene claras sus ideas y las transmite muy directas a los jugadores. Está claro que los jugadores se tienen que adaptar ahora a un nuevo sistema, a una nueva forma de jugar donde el balón es lo más importante, donde el movimiento de los jugadores es lo más importante, estar en movimiento, que nadie esté parado, dar muchas soluciones al compañero para que puedas siempre hacer dos, dos contra uno y que siempre haya ese movimiento. Para mí va a ser mucho más fácil, yo me tengo que adaptar a mis compañeros, mis compañeros a mí y yo creo que va, va a ir todo muy bien, no creo que necesitemos tantos partidos. Yo creo que desde el primer partido en Miami ya se va a ver a un Galaxy muy diferente a lo que se vio el año pasado seguro. Vale, gracias. La otra, Víctor, es España, México, MLS, Qatar, Bélgica. Eh, ¿Qué cosas le podría decir a los jugadores jóvenes de MLS que deben aprovechar y que deben sentirse orgullosos de tener en esta liga después de todas las experiencias? Pues la verdad que de, de todas las experiencias que he tenido siempre he dicho que la MLS es de las más gratificantes que tuve en mi carrera. Eh, también supongo porque con Toronto el primer año pues llegué y tuve la suerte de ganar todo. Entonces eso siempre aporta muchísimo más. Pero a los jugadores de aquí les diría que, bueno, que trabajen muy duro, que trabajen fuerte, que sobre todo, sobre todo se dejen asesorar por los jugadores que tenemos esa experiencia y que les podemos ayudar mucho en el aspecto dentro del campo y también fuera del campo para hacer bien las cosas y no, y no volverte un poco loco y no hacer cosas que a lo mejor no tienes que hacer. Porque bueno, yo creo que los jugadores de aquí ahora cada vez están creciendo cada vez más y más y son, eh, bueno, son muy fuertes físicamente y jugadores con mucha calidad, como tenemos ahora a Efraín, como tenemos a Julian como tenemos a otros jugadores que ya vi en los entrenamientos que están subiendo muy, muy fuertes. Y yo creo que lo importante es para ellos hacerlos un año dos años muy bien aquí para si de verdad tienen esa ambición de ir a Europa, pues adelante. Yo creo que la MLS es una liga increíble, pero todavía está un poco lejos de las ligas europeas, sobre todo de las grandes ligas europeas. Gracias, Víctor. Tenemos tiempo para una más. Vamos con Mónica Delgado de Pase Filtrado. Mónica, adelante. Muchas gracias, Vicky. Hola, Víctor. Te saluda Mónica Delgado de PaseFiltrado.com. Hola, buenas tardes. En el medio campo de LA Galaxy tendrás a un jugador como Jonathan Dos Santos que se ha convertido en líder del equipo. Víctor, ¿cómo te sientes de volver a compartir el medio campo con el jugador mexicano? Pues muy orgulloso, muy contento de volver a jugar con Jonathan después de 10 años. Creo que fue la última vez que jugamos juntos en el, en el Barça B, en 2011. Quiero recordar que fue... Sobre junio, así, uno de mis últimos partidos que jugué con él cuando yo ya me despedía. Y tengo muy buenos recuerdos de él. Sé de la clase de jugador que es Jonathan. El año pasado no pudo tampoco demostrar el jugador que es por lesiones y, bueno, por circunstancias también que el club y el equipo no estaba donde tenía que estar. Pero, bueno, todo el mundo sabéis de Jonathan. Es un grandísimo jugador con muchísima calidad y con mucho también liderazgo, que ya se ha hecho aquí, como tú bien dices, con, 
con la banda de capitán y que les tiene mucho respeto. Y nada, a estar ahí con él, ayudarlo en todo lo que se pueda, que él me ayude también a integrarme en el grupo y todo lo demás va a salir, porque somos dos buenos jugadores y cuando la gente buena se junta dentro del campo, eh, vamos a disfrutar mucho, como dije, y estoy muy contento de volver a, de volver a jugar con él. Víctor, muchísimas gracias por tu tiempo y bienvenido al club. Muchas gracias. Thank you, everybody.